far? The far. The far. I like, I like, I sort of like the direction you guys were taking it. You, you did a little bit here, here, here. You're doing the whole thing. Right. And in the editing, it could go back and forth. Right. In sections. Depends on, it, 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 honestly, it's interesting just to hear from here, you took it here to here. Last time you talked about Vietnam, now it's, you've talked a, a lot about, you know, a little bit about the mob and like, but you're still talking about painting. Yeah, we got to keep the painting in there. Well, that's it. And I think we've done yeah. that. Yeah. You know. We didn't talk about any real mob stuff. Well, I don't really want to get too into that. You know, because then I feel like I'm doing another one of the fucking National Geographic things. I'm just so tired of talking about that. Well, we can talk about it in a different way. Like what? Like, for example, I can ask you about, you know, like what we were talking about the other day with Nino, like how you felt what really underlying, like, I'll, I'll wait till those go, go ahead, I'm just adjusting. Um, you know, the underlying feelings you had about the way he treated you and what went down with, you know, feeling like, you know, he, he treated you in a bad way, he passed you over in ways he tried to keep you down, you know, and, and ultimately mm. you felt betrayed. Well, especially when they tried to whack me. <laughs> I mean, you well, can't feel more betrayed than that. Yeah, but before they tried to whack you. Yeah, well, I didn't, yeah. I guess you could use that word, betrayed, but I don't know if that's the right word. What is the right word? I don't know. You had your uncle raise you, and then he, you, you're working for him. He's paying you $250 a week. You know, you're getting offers to do other types of business that... Ultimately, you had to you know, talk to him about it, and he just kept saying no, kept you under his wing, but underpaid you and forced you to have to go outside to do stuff, which ultimately became a huge problem for you, right? Yeah, that's the reason I had to leave New York, was because of that, but... Uh yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how we how we hook that in with the art because what Billy said well, no, is I'm really saying, important. Yeah, you just talk; it, he can cut it later. You can just talk about stories, and then he can kind of do yeah, that. Right? That's that's how it's gonna go. It's yeah. Like, just just talk, you know, just like tell tell. I, I know the story, but talk a little bit about like what that was like in relationship with Nino. And if you feel at, at any moment you feel comfortable talking in front of me. Oh no, no, this is all documented shit. If, you okay. know. Um. I just get so tired of talking about that, <laughs> you know. But I get if you feel it, it'd be, you know. I feel it's important not to talk about, like, the stories necessarily of, you know, things that happen, more about the personal feelings of, you know, Nino raising you. You know, obviously you looked up to him and you had very fun feel. You loved the guy. He was your uncle. And, you know, you talk about him sometimes... <laughs> Like you miss him and like very yeah. fondly, but then at the other way you also well that was not what it was. It was like a love hate relationship, you know. You know, I mean, I loved him for who he was to me, you know, family wise. But I couldn't stand him when he was just like using me to death, you know. And I mean, I knew I was getting used, you know. I mean, two hundred fifty dollars a week, you know, and they had me rigging like hand grenades in people's cars, you know, blowing up fucking guys, shooting people in the fucking street for 250 a week. Well, like you were saying, what about these guys after, after Carlo Gambino died and they opened up the books? A lot of guys got made that you felt were punks? Not necessarily punks, but they just didn't do, ever have any work. You see, it used to be in order to even get put up, you had to have work under your belt. And these guys just never did. You know, one, like I told you, Joe Butch, you know, who's an underboss. Now, well, he's in jail now, but he's an underboss in the family. You know, dogged it on a job we had to do. He got sick the night before and couldn't, you know. But, I mean, that's like a whole nother, you know, thing to talk about, you know. Is that all the time in the world? I mean, I just think that it relates a lot to, you know, the mental space that you were in and who you are and became, you know, these are the things you went through. Like, when we were talking about the other day, you were, you know, very 
passionate about saying, you know, I should have been at least, you know, looked at, and they just passed me over and said I was too young. Yeah, and they made other guys my age. You know, it wasn't that I was too young. It was that. And weren't you an acting underboss when? <laughs> when Nino was away, I was an acting capo. And it's the only time, period, that a non-made guy was ever in that position, ever. Yeah.